Hello everyone, my name is Zina Islam and I'm the Relations Manager Academia Network at UNO Center. Welcome to lecture 21 of our YSBC web lecture series. Uh, today's lecture is a very special one as you can see. We don't have one speaker but we have five specialists who will talk on the topic of uh, creating social business leaders, introducing the UNO's professional masters in social business and entrepreneurship at the Asian Institute of Technology, Thailand. For accomplishing this task, we have today our moderator, Dr. Farhana Firdosi, Assistant Professor, Southeast Business School and Director, Institute of Research and Training, IRT, Southeast University, Bangladesh. The speakers today are Dr. Faya Shah, UNO's Professional Master's Program Lead and Director, UNO Center, Asian Institute of Technology, Thailand. Dr. Rakisha Ransom, Director of Enterprise Engagement, AIT School of Management. We also have with us Dr. Mogbul M. Ahmed, Faculty and Academic Program Chair, AIT School of Environment, Resource and Development. We also have our very own Professor M. Jahangir Alam Chaudhary, Professor, Department of Finance and Executive Director, uh, Center for Microfinance and Development, University of Dhaka, Bangladesh. And finally, we have uh, Mr. Callum McKenzie, Co-Founder and Director, Programs, Yunus Thailand Foundation. I know there's a lot of interest in the master's program around social business, and this conversation will certainly give you an idea how to go about it and who to contact for further information. So with this in mind, let us start today's session and call upon Professor Mohamed Yunus for his opening remarks. Uh, Professor Yunus. Thank you. Thank you, Zinat. It's very exciting today. It's a star-studded program today. It's a very special. This is a, a departure, departure from our way that we have been presenting this lecture series which is two persons one is a speaker and is moderator now we in this one we made a very special arrangement for a special reason because we want to focus on uh, designing and prevent presenting a very special kind of uh, uh, course uh, you know uh, professional master's degree sponsored by AIT uh, in Bangkok uh, so we thought this needs a special attention, bringing everybody together who are behind it. It's a very special kind of course uh, because uh, we wanted to give the best to it for, for, uh, for one reason. Another reason we wanted to have it as a, a 360 degree learning process. It's not just a classroom. It's not just on the ground experience. We mix everything, the classroom experience and the theoretical issues in the classroom and also on the on the ground experiences, management issues, finance issues, so that you see in every single angle how social business can be done, what it's all about. Uh, you become a very specialized, uh, understand, you get a very specialized understanding of uh, social business. And that's why this course is designed and we, we put everything behind it. Uh, so we are we are all uh, together in it. Uh, we wanted to tell you that uh, it's not an effort of one individual. It's a collective effort to make sure that we come up with a good uh, uh, course. It's a beginning. This one uh, that we'll be presenting here is a beginning of it. We continue to grow with it. And we, you, you are part of the growth process. So I would invite all the students who are still thinking about it, joining in, uh, uh, signing in, to attend that course. And we have, this is our uh, flagship course that uh, we want to uh, learn from it ourselves and also uh, get the students to learn with us uh, how a, uh, educa an educational program can be designed for the university and academic purposes and so on. Because academia ultimately is the key in getting these things into the mind, into the thinking process, into the changing process of the things that we are talking about. So this is very important. I don't want to introduce each one of you individually who will be speaking. I, uh, I give the floor to now uh, Farhana uh, to start the conversation. This is a conversation for everybody to uh, participate. And if you have a question, please come up with the question so that it becomes a part of this conversation. Thank you and welcome again for this very special session. Farhana, it's yours. You are muted. Can you unmute? Okay. Thank you, Professor Yunus and Yunus Center for giving me this opportunity to be part of this great session. Uh, it is my great honor to be on the same panel with a world-renowned person whom I follow my role model. 
and today I am really excited and delighted to introduce Yunus Professional Masters on Social Business and Entrepreneurship because you know this is this program is uh, much awaited and more importantly the program is going to be implemented by a world-renowned university Asian Institute of Technology AIT Thailand and this university is well known for their contribution in creating leaders in the field of technology management and sustainable development. We know Professor Yunus' vision is to create a world with zero poverty, zero unemployment, and zero carbon emission. And the worldwide COVID situation is driving us toward a no going back, which uh, would require new leaders who will not be job seekers and uh, profit seekers at the cost of environment. Rather, these new leaders will be creating a world with three zeros. And we appreciate that AIT has taken the timely and right initiative to create such leaders through designing a unique program with having all components of creating social business. And uh, so uh, without further ado, uh, let us hear from the heroes who have taken this initiative today. Now, uh, first I will go to uh, uh, Dr. Faiz Shah. Dr. Faiz Shah uh, is a director, Unicenter AIT and founding president in Thailand. And uh, I always admire Dr. Faiz Shah for his great contribution for social business. Uh, we, uh, as you know, since, since 2009, AIT has established Unicenter and is playing the pioneering role to harness the power of social business through their dynamic leadership. It is indeed a great journey to incorporate social business knowledge within the general business discipline. And through this initiative, the students, business leaders, and professionals will get a chance to know about the theories and practice of social business. Uh, Dr. Faisha, would you please tell us about the objective of the uh, YPM program that you were going to launch and also please introduce the operational aspect of this program. Right, thank you, uh, Dr. Fahana. It's a, a wonderful occasion as, as Professor Yunus has said, but let me first start by thanking, uh, uh, you know, the uh, Professor Yunus himself because the idea that uh, came, came at one of the social business days in Dhaka. And uh, I remember Professor Yunus saying that he would like to see a day where the classroom would go to the students rather than students coming to the classroom. So we started thinking even at that early stage. And then uh, in 2017, uh, Professor Yunus kindly shared with us uh, a set of uh, minimums that he wanted to have uh, visualized uh, into a program. So that's when really in earnest, we were able to start uh, building this and we really wanted AIT to do this because at AIT also we had this uh, uh, momentum building towards uh, uh, degrees for non-traditional and non-conventional uh, students and the UNIS Center was created at AIT for the purpose of producing uh, knowledge infrastructure for non-conventional students so it all came together very nicely. Now the objective is very similar, uh, very clear. The objective is that we wish to build social business leaders. Now, the, the thing with uh, most of our uh, conventional degree programs is, uh, and their excellent programs out there, is that they focus on a subject in depth, and most of the learning takes place around a particular uh, subject or a particular area of specialization. That's, that's the convention, and it's a very uh, successful convention. But when you approach social business and you wish to create social business leaders, you can't bracket them into one, two, or uh, you know, a, a small number of specialisms. These people have to not only have the skills, they need to know how to ask the right questions in the kind of world that we want to create and in the, in the, the, the paradigm that we now exist in. And then they have to have the tools in which to answer or by which to answer those questions. And thirdly, they need to have a very hands-on approach to learning. Now, I'm not saying other universities are not doing this. What I'm saying is that we were able to bring it together in a unique uh, formula. So uh, uh, the, the structure will come later, but the operational aspect is very simple. AIT has a number of schools. 
three schools, the School of Engineering, the School of Development, uh, Environment and uh, uh, Resources and Development, and then there is the School of Management. We have made an effort to bring all the schools together to play a particular role in a part of this program. And it is brought together by a practicum, which will be described later, which will be managed from the UNICE Center in Dhaka. So this is probably the only program of its kind, which is so specialized yet inter interdisciplinary. And it also is directly linked to the work that the UNICE Center does in Dhaka. So I could go on and on because it's taken me like almost four years to build this in a way that we can talk about it. So, you know, I don't want to get into that. But finally, the quick comment is that our first cohort launches in a week. And I see in the in the participant box, all six of our new incoming students are here. So I'm, I'm asking, I'm welcoming them and I'm um, introducing them to Professor Yunus and yourselves. They will probably ask questions in the QA session or in the box. So I'd like to put a special welcome in for our first cohort of students. I would like to name them, but we don't have time, but they will pop up in the QA session. I hope that was yes. useful. You have to unmute. Okay, uh, Professor Faisha, would you please tell us this, uh, what will be the strength of AIT to make this program powerful and successful? Well, again, the, the, the mandate that AIT was created was, was a development mandate. So we like to joke at AIT that we are a development organization disguised as a university. So the, the original intent of creating uh, AIT was to create an engine for development growth, creating professionals, which would create the kind of solutions that would build their countries up from uh, where they stand or they, where they stood in 1959 to, to uh, meet the standards of the modern world. Most of our countries who were the founding members of AIT. This is a group of countries that own the university uh, hosted by the Thai government. They have now, uh, uh, AIT graduates are now playing important roles in, in investing uh, or in building uh, uh, their country's development infrastructure, their engineering infrastructure, and their management infrastructure. So this program conforms very closely to the AIT original mandate, which is to create cutting edge professionals that would lead their countries and their communities into the path of accelerated and sustainable development. So that way it fits extremely well but we have taken a departure in that no other program is so closely integrating all the three schools and a number of outreach centers the way this one does. So it's also a first for AIT that we are very proud of. And now, uh, I would like to ask Professor uh, Jahangir Alup Choudhury. Uh, ja professor Jahangir, uh, as we know, he is the Professor of Finance and uh, Executive Director, Center for Microfinance and Development, and he is also serving as an ac academic advisor to UNO Center. And uh, I'm really honored to work with Professor Jahangir several times through the Wise Business Network, and Social Business Academia Network. And my question to Professor Jahangir, uh, would you please explain what will be the role of UNO Center in providing this master program? Thank you, Dr. Fedor Singh, for your kind words. Uh, basically, uh, before that, I would like to thank you know, Professor Yunus for nominating me to the steering committee of the program. And this steering committee is going to manage the whole program. And I'm delighted to be part of this program. Thank you. So basically, Yunus Center's role is going to be uh, uh, twofold. Uh, in, in the first category, it's going to be a supervisory role. So basically, you see, social business has got some principles which have been devised by professors. So in the center is going to look after whether the program uh, teaches these principles properly, whether the courses are designed according to the principles, uh, whether uh, the program deviates from this principle. Or not. So this is going to be the supervisor role. And I'm sure this supervisor role will help the program to stay on track, you know, to, to have like a uh, help the students to understand uh, what are the visions of Professor Yunus with respect to social business to make this world better. And, and this is going to be the first role. Uh, in the second role, this is going to be totally a partner role. So uh, Dr. Faisha has already mentioned that Yunus Center is going to be an integral part of the program. And this program is going to be 
uh, managed jointly um, in AIT and Unicenter. So uh, in the second category, uh, uh, Unicenter will get involved in the teaching process. It will be involved in the process of supervising students such extent. So you know that in the, in the whole design, there is a uh, thing that students will come to Bangladesh to visit uh, Unicenter as well as social businesses. So during that visit, uh, students will have the opportunity to listen to Professor Yunus, uh, Ms. Lamesh Moshe, the executive Yunus Center, and other experts, those who are actually familiar with the social business concept and the practical aspects. So they will be able to listen to, you know, these, uh, these leaders, social business leaders, as well as uh, academicians uh, like, you know, Parana Ferdowsi and others, those who work in social business in Bangladesh. So they'll be able to listen to these people. So this is one part. And, and the thing that, another part is when the students will come uh, to have hands-on knowledge on social business, in the center, we'll take them to the businesses uh, in the field to help them to understand what is the practical aspect of running, you know, uh, aspects of running social business. And they'll be able to talk to the owners as well as the beneficiaries of social business. So this aspect will help them to understand the practical aspects of the social business or the management part of the, or the even day-to-day, uh, -day, you know, the difficulties that owners uh, uh, face in terms of running uh, uh, a social business or running social business. So these things will be, they will be, they, they will be able to learn. So basically two roles, one is the supervisor role, you know, with respect to managing uh, the program, uh, running uh, the program according to the principles of, you know, formulated by professor. And the second part is getting involved directly in the program with respect to teaching and supervising the students. So these are the two roles. Thank you. Okay, that's great. Uh, I think uh, most of the people has confusion and uh, they get confused with social entrepreneurship. It is a first area and they have several understanding regarding this. Since Unicenter will be there and uh, the right message will be distributed uh, among the students and among the learners or practitioners. Okay, that's great. Thank you. I will be coming back to you again. Now I would like to go to Kalam Makenji and uh, already Gina has introduced him. He is the co-founder and director of UNIS Thailand and uh, co-founder and managing partner of Private Options. Uh, uh, I would like to ask Kalam, uh, would you please share the practicum of this program? Yeah, thanks. And uh... Firstly, it's uh, very exciting to be here, very, very much appreciative of the, the opportunity and also really exciting to have the opportunity to introduce this component of the programme as well, because I'm rather jealous that I can't go back and do my master's and uh, take this this programme <laughs> myself, really. <laughs> but, um, so I think in terms of the practicum component, we can kind of... I can kind of walk through the different semesters and the, and the kind of ticket in that way. So in the first two semesters of the programme, students will be taking the sustainability courses and also the uh, MBA and, and business courses. And the practicum aspects will kind of come in in bi-weekly sessions, which will be a mixture of field workshops or we'll go and visit communities, visit social businesses in Bangkok, visit different uh, partners like the UN system. Also a mixture of case workshops as well and case studies. And then also looking at uh, different uh, workshops that combine and connect the dots between the sustainability topics and the, the business topics and kind of bring this into a kind of a cohesive social business kind of learning journey. So that's kind of how the practicum will, will look from for the first two semesters. And then uh, this will also be complemented by bringing in lots of experts from you know, the, the global uh, UNIS social business family. Also Bangkok as well as a, as a, as a place is a real kind of sustainability development and, and also business hub for within Asia as well. So we have lots of networks and we have the United Nations system here as well. So lots of kind of guest lectures, guest people, facilitators coming into these workshops. So that's the kind of how the practicum will look in those first, first two semesters. Then as Professor Jahangir mentioned in the inter-semester, then the practicum travels to Dhaka, to, to Bangladesh, where they'll have a, you know, a really once in a lifetime opportunity to have master classes taught by Professor Yunus himself, which is you know, incredibly generous of him to uh, provide his time. But um, along those kind of, you know, uh, 
you know, uh, master classes with Professor Yunus. There's also sessions with different Grameen CEOs, and different Bangladesh social business leaders. And then also, as Professor Jahangir mentioned as well, visiting the field, visiting, you know, these really incredible and inspiring social business success stories, you know, in, in Bangladesh, and which is, uh, you know, which the whole world kind of looks to. And then after this kind of inter-semester period, then the students come back to Bangkok. And that's where the kind of practicum takes on the, the sandbox component there. And uh, I think Dr. Dakisha and I touch on this a little bit later, but basically this is where, you know, the, the, the students will start developing their social business idea themselves. So there'll be different practical workshops and different aspects and different components of a business plan. And then uh, also uh, developing this. And then the post program, because actually the practicum component doesn't just finish when the master's finishes. This then also connects the students onto Social Business Day, onto the Global Social Business uh, Summit, onto the Summer of Purpose, where they can actually present and pitch and share their, their social businesses that they've kind of developed throughout the program as well. So there's lots of other stuff I can kind of throw in there. And it's, uh, you know, it's something that really exciting. And we'll, we'll, it'll also be something we'll keep on adding to as, as it goes along as well. But that's the, the kind of the, the overview of, of how the practical uh, component of the program looks. Okay, uh, then uh, what will be UNIS Foundation's components here? Yes, yeah, so I think UNIS Thailand's role is is basically, I like to think of it as like with a companion, a companion for the students whilst they go through. So, you know, our role is to, you know, facilitate these workshops in Bangkok and to bring in the kind of practical uh, and kind of implementing perspectives from this to also make our, our networks uh, available to the students as well and connect them with all the different people we work with, whether that's leaders, but also community members as well, so they can get kind of first-hand experience. And also to, you know, be a bridge for the students from the, uh, from the master's programme into the kind of the global social business family as well. So I think we, we play a bit of a, a, of a dynamic role in this. And then also, you know, we help, you know, uh, connect, connect between uh, the components in, in Bangkok and in Bangladesh as well. And, uh, and you know, work hand in hand with our, with our uh, brothers and sisters in AIT and in the Unicentrum Dakar to kind of develop the program, uh, you know, all the way through in a kind of a cohesive learning journey. Okay, that will be great, I think. Okay, now uh, I would like to go to Dr. Lakisha Ransom. Uh, Lakisha Ransom uh, is, a, is the Director of Enterprise Engagement at AIT School of Management. Uh, Dr. Lakisha, uh, what, what will be your engagement strategy for this program? Thank you so much, Dr. Farhana. So um, in terms of engagement, as the colleagues have mentioned, as, and as Professor Yunus have has mentioned as well. Um, you know, the learning happens in the classroom, but you know, really we believe that the true learning happens when students have the opportunity to engage with the broader network um, within our community. So we have um, partners within the AIT ecosystem, as well as within the UNIS network who will um, collaborate with the students, particularly um, once they get to the sandbox um, phase of the program, as Callum has just mentioned, because this is when they have the opportunity to start building out their own social businesses and, you know, designing their business model canvas and, and really getting as many inputs from as many experts as possible so that they can have those perspectives built into their businesses as they develop the strategy. And, and so our network of partners consists of entrepreneurs, they consist of um, established companies and corporations in some cases that are really committed to um, impact in the impact space. And so um, understanding that people within the corporate sector often have you know, skill sets and passions to do something bigger that you know, their, their regular day job, if you will. And, and so we have people who have eagerly volunteered to collaborate with our students in this program. 
to help them to create the most robust um, social businesses on the ground, particularly, as I said, in the sandbox portion. And then the final stage is that students also have the opportunity to participate in our incubator program here at, at the Asian Institute of Technology. And so um, within our entrepreneurship center, um, we incubate uh, companies, uh, startups, whether they are traditional startups or certain startups in the social business space. And so uh, the students in our program here in the Unis Professional Masters in Social Business and Entrepreneurship also have the opportunity to take the businesses that they've designed throughout the course of their program with the emphasis being during the sandbox portion of the program and start to incubate them and pilot and learn from you know, the experiences that they have on the ground. Okay, thank you, Dr. Nakisha. It's a really amazing to heard about Sandbox and you need to better option. Uh, it is, I think it's a innovative to this course. Okay, thank you. Now uh, I would like to go to Professor Mokul. Professor Mokul is a faculty and academic program chair at AIT School of Environment Resource and Development. And previously, Dr. Mokul was an assistant professor in Bangladesh at, uh, at the Department of Geography and Environment, University of Dhaka. And he has first experience in, uh, also in civil servant uh, in the ministries of public administration and commerce. Uh, and now, uh, Pro Professor Mokul, uh, would you please explain what sustainability issues you are addressing through this program? Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Farhana. Also, it's a, a, a privilege to talk in a session where Professor Yunus Sar is there. Anyway, uh, the, the, the quick answer to it is that, um, uh, as Dr. Fayez has mentioned, the, our school, School of Environment, Resources and Development, is mostly uh, focused on the areas of engineering, development, and particularly social science and development areas. So what exactly we do in terms of sustainability it means that both, for example, in agriculture, we have a very strong program on agriculture and food engineering. We also have strong program in environmental engineering. So you can see in, in terms of sustainability, we do teach and we do research in areas, for example, uh, the, uh, the marine plastic abatement, and at the same time working on energy issues, particularly working on sustainable energy, and then particularly renewable energy. So all those issues are, I mean, dealt with in our school in terms of teach, well, I mean, teaching and also research. At the same time, the, the areas of the community work, working with uh, the communities, natural resources, we have a very strong program called natural resources management, for example. So these are some of the key areas of natural, I mean, sustainability, we do teach and research in our school. So I, I'm, I'm sure uh, our students and friends will be joining us in our, uh, I mean, future, uh, I, I, I would say in, in text, I, I, I'm sure they will be benefited from learning the areas of sustainability where we do teach and research. Thank you, Professor Bokbu. So I think uh, in, indeed the leaders that you are going to create, uh, they will obviously focus on uh, the three zeros. Uh, uh, through the sustainability issues, they will cover yes, the zero yes. net carbon emissions. And through the program, they will also learn uh, to unleash their entrepreneurial capacities and also they will contribute for poverty reduction. Okay, thank you. Uh, one more question for, to you. Uh, AIT is renowned in the field of technology, right? So yes. what technological components you would cover in this program? That That is, uh, as I told you, that... Uh, the our school particularly to, to be very specific uh, which is a very wonderful mixture of both uh, technology development areas so it ranges from food production value chain to environmental engineering for example we also have strong program on energy and the, all those areas i i think we have a i would say very good package of courses where our, I think our students can choose from based on their own interest. Say, for example, somebody wants to go further on, uh, I mean, I would say inter developing enterprises for renewable energy, for, I mean, any kind of production and recycling and, and other areas, reducing, reusing of resources. They can take, a, I mean, courses and modules from those particular programs. And I'm sure they'll be benefited from that based on their own interest and future plan beyond the regular master program that we are starting next week. 
that's that's great. Uh, now uh, I would not like go back to the Dr. Faisha. Uh, in uh, Dr. Faisha, in traditional business, we have the opportunity to learn about business and management, right? So how does this program make a difference to the existing MBA degree? And what is very unique to this program? Right, well, that's a great question because uh, one thing that we considered when we were trying to design this program was that it should not be a dead end program. Uh, it should be a program that rather than closing doors for students, opens doors to people. So we are integrating regular MBA coursework into the degree so that people who are part of the UNIS professional master's program are in tune with exactly what is being taught at the top business school in the country. At the same time, they take regular masters in sustainability program courses at the School of Environment Resources and Development so that they are mainstreamed into the learning environment for sustainability. There are no shortcuts. This is a rigorous program. It's not for uh, people who are thinking, oh, we'll just you know, go in and have a great time. Yes, you will have a great time, but in the learning rigor that we provide. And so that's one thing. And the exit points for this program are also designed in, to keep in mind students who do not wish to spend one straight year into in, in their school. So there are, it's a calibrated program. You can jump in and jump out of the program. You get up to four years to complete the masters, but there are exit points where you can leave with certificates and you can leave with professional uh, credentials as you move. So we have tried to create a, a program which makes a lot of sense to a lot of career trajectories and it fits into most of the modern choices that young people are making of going to school and working, going to school and paying as they go, going to school and still maintaining their aspirations to become entrepreneurs, but having to look for a job in a job market that's very crowded. So what I try to convey here is that we've designed this programs for program for versatility, for a dynamic job market, but eventually for people who will want to follow in the footsteps of some of the most change-making social business entrepreneurs that you will meet. And it's all guided by the vision of social business that we have from Professor Yunus. I hope that answers some of the questions. Okay, thank you, Vaisha. Uh, uh, you have mentioned uh, some rigorous opportunities of this program. Uh, now I would also like to ask Colin McKinney again, uh, in order to get the audience involved in it, would you please tell us something, what will be the powerful opportunities of this program in addition to Paisha? Yeah, I think um, there's, there's so many different opportunities, really. There's, I mean, just by, you know, with uh, just by having a master's program that's kind of part of both AIT as a leading university, but also, you know, really part of the global social business family as well. You have so many opportunities to have global exposure to different social businesses, different, different experiences all around the world. And that's kind of our jobs, really, as the steering committee, as the people who are kind of running this program, to basically curate those various different experiences and opportunities for you. So I think that I think this is something we're really keen on as well in this program is to is to make is to redefine the relationship between the people who are running the program and the students. You know, this is a real we really want to be with the students hand in hand and open as many doors and and really facilitate a, a really holistic experience in many different directions. And I think Bangkok as well, and that mixture between Bangladesh and Bangkok and is, is also really, really huge as well for, for people who might be joining from outside of the region. Because, you know, Bangkok is the second, uh, second largest centre, for example, of the UN system in the world. And you have all the different international agencies, for in the international development sector, but also you know many different leading businesses here as well. So there's different exposures in that sense, and you know social business is really you know uh, an emerging uh, topic, an emerging sector in, in Thailand as well. And then of course you have this inter semester opportunity as well. So go to Bangladesh, you know learn from Professor Yunus himself, learn from the Grameen CEOs, visit social businesses on the ground in the kind of the, the, the global centre of social business. 
So I think these these practical experiences combined with the the you know the really you know world class academic rigor you know which uh, which our friends at AIT are, are delivering with this program combined together opens many doors. And you know what we want to what we want to produce is social business doers. Now, what is a social business doer? Hope, you know, hopefully they go on and create social businesses themselves. But there's also huge opportunities to be social entrepreneurs if you want to go into the corporate sector, to be a social business activist within an international organization as well. So when we talk to different organizations, different people from different sectors, they've all said that social business entrepreneurship is a really, really valuable skill set. If yes, if you want to create your own social business, but also if you go and work in a number of different job descriptions areas as well. So I think Dr. Fai has really, you know, hit on the head where he said his whole degree is about opening as many doors as possible. But the key thing that it's about is really producing, you know, doers, social business doers, which is, you know, incredibly important, particularly in this kind of no going back context and in the, the, the kind of the global situation we're in at the moment. So there's a bit of a long answer to your question, but hopefully it's, uh, you know, addressed some of the, some of the, the points. Thank you, Palam. Uh, now let me go to Dr. Lakisha. Uh, Lakisha, now let us explore some opportunities for faculties. Uh, uh, what will be the scope for faculties from different academia networks uh, to be involved with this program? Yes, you know, I, I think that it really is um, dependent on the students' interests and their passions. And we have such a wide network of faculty within AIT itself, but then also with our affiliate, um, you know, uh, university network. So, so there really isn't a limit. If the student is interested in agronomy, and business, if they're interested in human rights and business, if they're interested in water and, and business, community development and business. And so, so it really is, is up to the student um, and their desire to create impact and the ways in which they want to create impact and the faculty who are core to the program, we will work with the students to develop the best possible support network for them so that um, you know, they have experts who can really help to educate them. And then again, more, more importantly, or as importantly, you know, to build their social businesses. So, so the exciting part about this program is that yes, at the end, students will have earned a master's degree, but they also will have at least a blueprint to go out and create impact. And so that comes from having access to just phenomenal faculty experts, as well as other um, committed mentors within our ecosystem to help um, bring the students' visions to fruition. So we're really, really excited about this. That's great. Thank you, Lakisha. Uh, now my question to Professor uh, M. Jahangir Alam Choudhury. Uh, any other opportunities uh, available for Bangladeshi to study social business and entrepreneurship? Could you ex uh, focus on that issue, please? Uh, okay, thank you. I'm going to answer this question from the perspective of Bangladesh. Okay. Uh, at this moment, we don't have a such a program in Bangladesh, like the program that we are going to have at AIT. So this is the uh, this is a problem, but hopefully we'll, uh, uh, we hope that and some of the universities will follow, you know, after uh, seeing AIT successful in, with respect to this program. So this will happen in the future, hopefully. But, but however, you know, uh, with, with respect to training and short courses, uh, we have some, some programs. Uh, for example, some of the universities that have got a course um, at the BBA level. Uh, one of our university, uh, one of the universities has a uh, measure in social business in the BBA program. So that means uh, students could take that social business stream to do their measure. So this is one thing. And another thing is that with respect to training programs, I would like to mention uh, uh, the program of uh, Deferred Institute International University. They have got a, an international training program which attracts a lot of foreign students, foreign training your participants. Uh, they do it annually, the regular basis they've been doing. And apart from Deputy International University, we have like, you know, Dhaka International University, Eastern University, 
uh, East Delta universities. Uh, these universities have got you know some training programs. Also, they have got a, like a course in the BBA program to teach. So, okay, so we have got like some short programs, but not you know at the extent of AIK right now. But hopefully, uh, we'll be able to uh, convince some of the universities in Bangladesh to offer such a degree program, degree awarding program in social business in the future. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, one more uh, thing I want to know is, uh, can any university of Bangladesh provide the same program in collaboration with AIT? I think Paisha can also answer this. Uh, this. Is there sure. any opportunity uh, to provide this in collaboration with you? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, uh, as uh, uh, maybe uh, we will uh, find out in the coming months, a number of our YSBC partner universities are now engaging uh, with us. And uh, the original intent of this program, Dr. Farhana, was to make it a truly global and mobile program. So we are heading hopefully in a direction where people can take courses in different universities and still be able to qualify for um, a, 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 a credible master's degree, but that's in the future. So as we speak, uh, we are in negotiations, or not negotiations, but conversations with a number of YSBC partners where we will be able to offer modules or invite uh, students to join AIT's programs to gain credit. And uh, finally, the UNIS colloquium in Dhaka is open to everybody. So we will hopefully by the time next June rolls over and the colloquium is established, we will invite applications from all the 92 universities within the UNIS social business center network and outside, particularly Bangladeshi universities and Thai universities to join the summer program so that they can all be part of a larger crowd. And then part of that will also translate into some of these students going back and joining the sandbox module, which is the third semester add-on professional module for students. So hopefully this will create more awareness and more demand. And that will churn, as Professor Jangir just said, more demand for other universities to begin uh, uh, step ladder efforts, which will create a truly global program. So that's where we hope to take this eventually. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, then uh, let me ask uh, Dr. Mughul Ahmed, uh, how courses are run during this COVID situation, especially field study or field visit? Yeah, thank you. Uh, two questions, I think, in one question. One is the regular teaching and also the field trip. Let me go one by one. First one is, uh, I think, uh, all of us know that uh, the COVID situation is, I mean, is quite varied across the world. But here in Thailand, it is quite, quite alarming now. Uh, frankly speaking, there is a nighttime curfew in Bangkok for the last couple of days. Maybe it will continue for a couple of weeks. Uh, I mean, as far as I can understand now. So we actually, during this pandemic, pandemic time, we had two modes of learning in EIT. One is uh, online teaching. Another was hybrid teaching. So online teaching was the mostly that all students uh, only can take the join the lecture online. So mostly by Zoom. So we teach. We did not disrupt our regular, I mean, teaching. That means our regular, uh, I mean, lecturing and exams all were held on time, but it was mostly online. And of course, exams are also online, uh, but particularly for, for example, ExamNet, all the other softwares we used. At the same time, when there are some better times last year and sometime this year, we had the hybrid teaching. One was that was that. Some students could join online. Some students could, could come to the classroom to join the lectures. So that was that is called hybrid. So EIT has developed a, more than uh, I think ten or eleven classrooms across the campus because you know we are small. We are a graduate school. We don't have undergraduate program. So I mean all these hybrid classrooms are equipped in this way. The students can come to the classroom at the same time. They can join the lecture. From there. And then the second part of the question, the issue of field field work. You can understand because of the pandemic, I mean, mobility is heavily restricted and only possible, I can tell you one or two cases, including in my own program, we have a workshop course. We took a special permission and it was quite difficult, but thanks to the, our partners, they allowed us to visit with the due precaution. But in most cases, we, I know you understand our field trips are very limited. In most cases, we use the online mode, we use the, um, I mean, I would say, 
IT as a services so that talking to people and communicating. So that's how we are managing. But I think you, you also know the another major part of AIT, I mean, teaching and, uh, and learning is the research component. So most students here, they do thesis, they do research study, they do internship, they, write, they do practicum, and they mostly do it on their own. And in, I mean, I'd say in collaboration with the faculty members and external experts. That's how we are uh, continuing in during the pandemic, more than one year. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. One more question to you. Uh, the courses that you have designed, uh, could you please uh, give a brief idea about the courses uh, that you are offering and how does it make a social entrepreneur leader? Thank you. Again, two parts. Of, I, I, I will take, make, break it in two parts of the question. First is that the courses we have at the same time, the entrepreneurship, particularly social entrepreneurship. So I think uh, if you look at, uh, I mean, our courses in my school, where we, I mean, we, that means our, this uh, steering committee we worked on so that we can really help our uh, students to equip properly for the, uh, the entrepreneurship idea and practice. It is a combination of both theory, but very limited, mostly on practice. We will be giving case studies, we'll be organizing classroom debates, discussions, so that students can, I mean, get my knowledge about the recent debates and particularly empirical work done on some of the, I mean, I mean recent models and experiments. At the same time, they will themselves also do their own exercise to learn what exactly we can, I mean, go ahead in terms of particularly their own career. Say, for example, somebody wants to become an entrepreneur on energy related issues. I'm sure they will prefer to take courses from sustainable energy, renewable, I mean, all the both the areas of, I mean, I mean the production at the same time, other areas of energy debate. We also have climate change program where we have courses on adaptation, mitigation. Those who are interested in that, they can take courses like that. Just for example, those who are more focused on environmental issues, as I mentioned to you a few minutes ago, they can also take one or two courses on environmental management, environmental engineering issues, say for example, marine plastic and other issues. We have a very big program on marine plastic abatement funded, mostly funded by the Japanese government. A good number of students are taking that program. And I think this, I mean, I would say next week, that is our main intake in EIT. Around 30 students are joining EIT for this only marine plastic program, which is a combination of both classroom teaching at the same time working in the factories, of course, in Thailand, you understand. So if they take courses, I'm sure they will learn by working in the factory level, industry level, to learn the link between the industry and, of course, the uh, academia. Thank you. So uh, it is it is not going to be fixed. Uh, I think the students will have some flexibility to choose uh, among yes. the alternatives, right? Okay, that will be great. Based on their own interest. So for example, I, as I told you, somebody wants to be more focused on, uh, I mean, re 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 reuse, uh, recycling areas. So they will take courses which are focused on those issues. Those who want to be, say, for example, working on issues which will be mitigating the climate change challenges, they will be taking uh, modules which are mostly energy, and uh, particularly I mean, energy and mitigation I mean, focused courses. Those who want to do more on, for example, very much social science, because they can take courses or modules from gender and development studies and uh, development planning studies, disaster management, for example. We have a very strong disaster management program. So they can take courses for risk reduction, disaster management program, particularly preparedness and of course, post-disaster uh, reconstruction areas. Oh, wow, that's great. So it is, uh, I think it's really uh, amazing that through the course you are going to offer, it will obviously create a new breed of leaders who will be equipped with bright mix of entrepreneurial skill, knowledge and creativity and who will be passionate to create a positive and uh, sustainable impact on the society. Right? Exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Okay, okay. So uh, I think uh, we are at the end of the session. So let us uh, check the Q&A session, uh, whether there is any question, uh, let me check. Uh, a, a question uh, has came, uh, who can take admission uh, in this program? Is there any age limit or any other professional requirement for choosing this course? I mean, choosing this program? Maybe I can take that if that's okay. Now, this is a professional program. 
and there is no age restriction uh, uh, specific. Uh, in fact, AIT doesn't have any age determined degree programs. And uh, all we need is a good undergraduate education from a reasonably good university and an English language score uh, which is acceptable to international universities. Those are the two only only two fixed prerequisites. Uh, but a lot depends on your statement of purpose and how you uh, uh, are uh, reflecting your experience and your aspirations for this program. That's also key determinant. So uh, we are trying to again bring down the barriers of entry to master's level education. Um, the rest of AIT has very rigorous standards for specialized programs. But in this particular case, the focus is on what you are able to um, imagine as your aspirational goals. And of course, keep the minimum educational requirement that is necessary for all good graduate education. Okay, uh, then uh, let me check the next question. Um, oh. What about the tuition fees? Is there any provision for getting any scholarship uh, with, uh, from this program? Again, I'll, I'll take that as well. Right now, um, the tuition fee is uh, in Thai baht is 18,000 baht per credit. So this is a, a program is 30 credit hours. So that's the standard AIT fee. This year, we have not been able to uh, marshal any um, financial support for incoming students. But as uh, we move ahead, as more students join, and as the program becomes more uh, mainstream, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have great hopes that there will be sponsored scholarships available uh, for students of this program. This is the first cohort, and uh, we are all uh, excited to have them, but unfortunately, we're not able to give them any direct financial support. But it will change as we move ahead. Okay, uh, uh, I can see Anna, one more question. Is it possible to upload the whole course content in a website so that the uh, interested people can get the glimpse of the master degree program without having film work and practical work? Uh, is it available uh, through your website? I was, yes, I was going to say that Callum has just shared the uh, Eunice Masters website for you. It's in the chat box. So please go uh, and visit that site. Uh, it's a very detailed description that we have for every course that is offered. And it also uh, provides how these courses integrate through the practicum. And uh, there is a list of faculty and there is a list of uh, partner institutions uh, who are possibly going to become uh, internship or field visit partners and so all that information is available we've tried to make it as comprehensive as possible but please do write to us uh, if there is another question in fact there is another question here in the chat box that talks about uh, sharing the details of the sandbox uh, we we will uh, definitely respond to this in detail uh, to Kasim's question but if other people have any specific questions please pop us an email and we'll send you as much detail as is uh, as as you require. Yeah. I think Colum can answer, or Miss Lakisha can answer this question. Uh, detail about sandbox. Uh, I think audience uh, want to know more about it and what to expect out of it. Yes, I can. I can answer. And Callum, if you'd like to contribute, please feel free to do so. So the sandbox is really designed to be a way for students to take all of the information that they learned in their coursework and apply it to uh, their own unique um, vision, you know, something that really motivates and inspires them. So, so it is more self-directed with the guidance of a faculty advisor and a network of mentors and supporters to help them to build out their, their you know, vision for their social business, the, the type of impact they would like to create. So while the coursework, the traditional coursework, there are 12 credits that students will take from the School of Management, 12 credits 
that students will take from the School of Environment and um, Natural and Resource Development. And then the Sandbox is really a, a more um, self-directed opportunity for students to hone in on maybe something that they learned in a class, maybe something that they're really passionate about now. And, you know, they, they really develop their understanding of the challenges and understanding of the opportunity. And so the sandbox really, you know, I guess if we think about a more traditional master's degree program and how students often, more often than not, they choose their thesis topic based on the interest area that they have. This is a, an applied um, opportunity for students to not only select a project, but a project that has a strong, you know, potential to really come to fruition. Um, Callum, if there's anything else that you would like to contribute to this, um, please go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's already really brilliant. I mean, the only thing I would add is that, you know, the sandbox is also not just staying in a room as well. You know, a key part of that sandbox as well is you know, looking at design thinking methodologies, you know, where actually the first step and the most important step is going out and visiting and experiencing people who are experiencing the problem that you're trying to solve through your social business as well. So empathizing, you know, with people who are having that problems, then coming back, defining what you exactly want to address, and then as quickly as possible, developing some form of, you know, minimum viable product, developing a small pilot to go out and test your social business with people again. So I think it's a very, the sandbox is, is going to be a very, um, is it going to be a very human experience where you're going to be interacting with lots of people. And at the same time, you're going to be there in a cohort with all these different people also going through the same journey as well, you know, maybe in different areas. There's a really fantastic opportunity to learn from people as they're also going through the journey and then yeah as Dr Lakeisha mentioned as well you have the mentors you have the facilitators you have the faculty experts there to kind of unpack and guide and not necessarily teach at this point but just to um, enable you to kind of unpack and develop the different components of a of a business plan so that your social business experience and knowledge and learning journey comes together into a kind of a really actionable kind of end product by the time you graduate. So, um, yeah, I think if that- Dr. Fahana, may I take, uh, just to add to this, there are seven skills seminars that are part of the sandbox that will run in parallel to whatever Dr. Lakeisha and uh, Callum have said. So as people are developing their social business plan, as they're taking the design thinking uh, sessions and so on, for every seminar, there is a matching component of the business plan that they will have to prepare. So it's actually an assisted learning design. And the final exam is basically the presentation or pitching of that business idea to uh, independent observers, ideally in the social business summit every year. So, so it's, it's uh, as, as described, but it's also got a structured, it's got a ladder of learning also designed into that. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, we think we are at the end of the session. So at this stage, I would like to hand over this session to Ms. Gina. Uh, Gina, are you here? Okay, yeah. Um, thank you very much, um, Ms. Dr. Farhana Ferdosi, and to all our speakers. This has been a really great and informative session. I think um, we discussed some of the important aspects of the program, but um, I'm sure a lot of people want to know much more in details, for which I request everyone to please check um, their website. I think that has the complete information. Uh, meanwhile, I have received you know, requests from otherwise BCs interested in developing master's program and from Malaysia, Nepal, and I'm sure we can all work together to make this happen. Um, not only one master's program, but many, many more. And um, I'm sure we will have to reach out to you all very soon to get your advice. And um, uh, with that, um, if 
while there's the master's program and uh, to our audience members who want to check out these through the website, if you are not able to access any of those, um, there's always still resource in our social business pedia, our lecture series that we're having like this one, this is the 21st one, but we have had, you know, 20 more before this, uh, all these are available on our social business pedia, our social media, you can check out the recordings on social business pedia uh, and hear directly from the social business entrepreneur talk about their business and we of course have professor Yunus's books and our resource materials available on the website um, if you need more information so thank you very very much again to all our respected speakers today and to our respected moderator thank you very much for your time and uh, with this we conclude our session today uh, now i kindly request the it team to play a slideshow on our upcoming events and uh, lectures coming up thank you very much Please play the slideshow. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. See you again.